Hello, and welcome to another week at the bungalow. Got a bit of insulation to do this week, and we're also moving our way around to the rear, and we'll be doing the dormer cheeks. So starting where we left off, got some insulation going into the cavity at the front here. The property previously had injected, uh, sort of after the event, cavity fill. And what is left is a lot of gaps where it's settled over the years. So what we're looking for was something we could sort of pour in the top of the cavity and would uh, settle itself into all the gaps and in total fully fill in the cavity. So we've gone with these fire rated polystyrene beads. All been coated so that they're you know, non-combustible. And they're nice and light and they pour, it's, it's quite strange, it's almost like water. And so there you go, the front's done. And we've got the battens back in place. So these are the cheeks of the dormer. These will be tiled. So we've got the same situation. This is the probably the worst bit, is this cavity here, which as you can see, all the gaps as you look down through the cavity, it sort of collects around the wall twice quite happily. But just to give it something, we're adding an awful lot of insulation all over the place with all the new stuff that we're adding on to get it up to current standard. And it just seems absolutely crazy to leave the the cavities or the walls that we're leaving that are just normal block and brick with nothing in them. So we've got a cubic metre or so of uh, these beads. And they're nice and light, so we've got the bit of rock wall just to fill up the cavity, just to top off the cavity, stop them blowing around, stop it moving around. But you can see it moves almost like water. It flows down and keeps moving even after you stop pouring. go all nicely filled up should keep it a bit warmer and trap a bit of air at this point we ran out so that's why we end up we end up leaving it slightly shy but what it does mean is by getting that filled up we can we can start getting the battens on to hold the tiles for the cheeks of the dormer So exactly the same as the front here. We've got the uh, battens which are 25 by 35 or 38 mil battens. And that's on top of the breathable membrane. And then we're using the same artificial slate edging. So it's just as if the dorm has just been cut through the roof space. So now we've got a few of the battens on. We've got the 9mm uh, OSB just to cover up the outside. And then we get the breathable membrane on top of this as well. Once again, just to try and keep a bit of weather out. In an attempt to start sealing her up. Obvious mistake just here. We had to uh, put the battens on before we put the siding on. So we're using 9mm OSB to go on top of the framing. And we obviously hadn't left space in between the, the battens and the framing to get the uh, OSB in. So that had to come off and go back on again. Bit of a pain in the bum. So we're back to re-spacing battens all the way down the remainder of the roof.
So as far as the cutting is concerned, we use rip saw, nice straight edge or the straightest piece of timber we had. Quite fortunately, the batten it makes a nice spacer between the uh, blade and the edge of the guide on the rip saw. And then we use straight piece of timber just to rip across. So with the top buttons out of the way, we can get in that piece of uh, OSB, mark it up for the screw holes. And then the rest of the buttons can go back into place. Like I said earlier, this top section here would be left. We actually run out of the beads, so we've got to order a few more. But that'll get topped up and then the buttons will continue on to the top of the roof. So with the breathable membrane on this side. All nice and completed. And we move ourselves around the other side. Exactly the same process, we start at the front. Check them nice and upright, nice and square. This is a bit of uh, the lintel that runs all the way along the back. Just slightly proud. Get that out of the way. And then this siding can also go on. Obviously with the new build side we don't have to worry too much about insulation because we've got obviously got the cavity bats in there. Cavities are fully filled 100 mil. And the block works obviously cell cons so they give a bit of insulation as well. So about exactly the same process as the other side. So we've got our artificial slate edging to take the overhang. And then we've got a bit left proud here by the brick layer so we've just got to knock that off just so it lies nice and smooth and the good thing about the blocks nice and easy to cut then we can continue downwards So the breathable membrane wraps underneath and we've got a piece going over the top of the ridge and back down the other side to give us that waterproofing. And then the first band goes pretty much at the top up by the ridge to get the cloakers in place. So the ridge in between these, these pieces here will obviously be filled and will be um, regular ridge but as we go over the dormer it has to be ventilated so that will be a dry ridge. We've got aqua board or concrete board going on the side of the cheeks. That'll hold the render.
and as we finish the week and at the heading towards the end of this day we've got the last bits of panelling going in the, the back across the back of the dormer so it's the same 9mm OSB cut up with a circular saw So as the last couple of bits go on and the sun goes down, I thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on the next one.